Hello, I'm Brittany Knight and I am the owner at Knight's Poultry and Lab. Um, we are going to go over how you collect your blood sample to be able to send in for your DNA test. It's super simple and super quick. Um, I'm going to show you really quick the supplies that you're going to need and then I'll actually pull the DNA from a chick so you can see how it's done. Alright, so let's go over the supplies you're going to need. You're going to need PCR tubes, and don't worry, I'll go over where to get these. It's super easy, and if you don't want to get them off Amazon, then I can send you some. Just reach out. Um, so you're going to need a PCR tube for every, that's a horrible one to show you. See how the lid's broken a little bit? So, let's take that one out. You're going to need a PCR tube for every sample. You're going to need little baggies to put your sample in. Now. Some people just label it one through whatever, however number many chicks you're doing. Some people put a little sticker on there and write on that. Either way is fine. You can write directly on the bag or you can write on a sticker as long as it's legible. Then you're going to need a larger bag to put all of your individual samples in. So if you're doing four samples, you're going to want four little bags for your PCR tubes to go in to keep them separated. Then you're going to put all four of the bags in a larger bag. This bag can be a sandwich bag. It does not matter what bag it is. It does not have to be the little, you know, specific bag. On this bag, label it with your name and however many samples you're sending in. So if you're sending four samples, just put a four on it with your name. Just to make sure they're separated and kept straight. You're also going to need, um, I use the clippers. Some people use fingernail clippers, these to me thing much easier to clean in between. Um, it's just regular dog pet grooming clippers. These seem to work the best for me, but again, you can use fingernail clippers. It's fine. I like to have some blood stop on hand. Um, I got this at Tractor Supply. I think Walmart even has it. It's typically on the same shelf with your clippers. I also like to have a little spoon to kind of dip out a little bit of the blood stop so that I'm not making a mess with the big container. I just have this on hand to just dip the little toenails in when I get done. You're going to need a way to label your chicks. Um, that way you can keep your samples separated, right? So that you know which number goes back to which chick. These are just the little numbered zip ties. I think you can get it on that tractor supply. You can get it on that Amazon. Um, you don't have to use these. Whatever system you use, that's fine. Just as long as you have a way to keep your samples separated so you know which chick is going to be male or female. And then when you collect all your samples and you get them in their bags, you're going to just put it in a little padded envelope. It doesn't have to be cute and purple. It could be whatever. <laughs> and you're going to mail that to me. So I think we covered all of the supplies. Just to go over that, you're going to need PCR tubes. You're going to need little baggies to put them in, labeled with the PCR tube number. You're going to need a larger bag, whether it be a Ziploc or whatever, to keep them all contained. And then you'll put them in your, um, in your packaging to ship to me. You're also going to need your bands or something like that to keep your chicks separated. You're going to need your clippers to clip the toenails and a little bit of blood stop just in case. All right. And obviously you're going to need your chicks and some alcohol and I just use I use little tore up pieces of paper towel. Alright, so let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my PCR tube. I just dropped that one so I'm gonna get another one because I do want to talk to you about how to handle the PCR tubes. So when you get the PCR tubes when you pick it up pick it up from the bottom try not to touch the cap or anywhere on the inside of the cap or the inside of the tube because we're going to be putting our sample inside of the top of the tube, like in the cap. We're gonna be just dropping our little bit of blood right in there. So we don't wanna to touch that and contaminate it. So we're gonna hold our PCR tubes without touching the top. When you pull it out of your bag, you're gonna do it without touching the top. Okay, and then when we did our, get our dab of blood, we're gonna just close it like that from the underneath, okay? All right, so now that we've talked about the PCR tube, Let's get our blood stop ready. We usually don't need it on some of the older chicks you may. So I do like to keep it handy just, just to have it to dip their toes in, just to be safe, especially, you know, on the bigger chicks. So I just get out a little dab and keep it to where I can just dab their little toe in it. 
that way and close your stop back up because if you're like we are in mississippi it's very very humid so it'll start um clogging up on your powder it'll start to do its job with the moisture in the air okay so now that we have our powder ready we're gonna take our clippers and we're gonna go ahead and spray them with alcohol. I like to spray the clippers themselves, especially at the beginning. Um, you don't have to in the, in between doing your chicks, you don't have to spray it. You can spray the paper towels, as long as you're making sure that you're wiping in between. You get a bigger piece of paper towel. Okay, so we're gonna wipe in between every toe clipping that we do. So we're gonna make sure that our clippers are completely free of DNA and make sure you dry up the alcohol really good because the alcohol could start breaking down the DNA. All right, so we have our clippers ready to go. Next, we're gonna set those to where, set them somewhere that has not been um, chickasized. <laughs> All right, so next, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and band our chicks if we haven't done that yet. I like to get my band started a little bit, just because they are so tiny. Here's our little chick that we're gonna be doing. You're okay, little guy. So you're just gonna hold the foot, stick it on. I'm sure y'all are very familiar with putting on bands. And if not, that's okay too. We're gonna cinch it down, but we're gonna make it to where it's still very loose. It can move around really easily. See, it just won't come over those last toes. I like to use fingernail clippers to clip off that excess. You can use scissors though. You're okay, little guy. All right, so now that we have our chick, I put it on upside down, but now that we have our chick numbered, you're gonna wanna get a piece of paper or somewhere in your phone, in your notes, somewhere so that you know what chick is going to which tube number. So I wrote them down. He is, this is how I like to do mine. It just keeps them straight. And then I take this sticky note off and I stick it to the brooder that I am um, testing. So he's gonna be band number 19, but he's gonna be sample number one. So I have my first sample. And again, remember we don't touch the top. Our little PCR tube right there. Okay, so we're gonna take the clippers and ever so gently, you see his little toenail? We're gonna snip the smallest amount off. Just snip it back very slowly. I like to look and see if there's no blood, then I'll snip it back a little bit more. It's best to go a little bit at a time and take off more as we go. You're watching for blood. See, I did a very little bit. Let's see if I can, let me find something to see if it can let y'all see. Come on camera, you can do it. See that tiny amount of blood that's right there? If you doesn't start, if you see blood coming, but it's not bubbling up, you can squeeze the toe gently and you'll see it start to bubble up. Just kind of pulse on the toe and the blood will start to come up. You see that little tiny dot? All right, so we're gonna take our PCR tube and we're going to dab his little blood dot into the tube, okay? I kind of got it on the side there, looking at the camera. Let's look again. Again, another little dab of blood. And it's such a small, like, like they barely bleed any if you cut it back so slowly. So I squeezed up a little dot of blood. You falling asleep for me, buddy? Yeah, I know my hand's warm. And see that tiny amount of blood in there? That's all we're gonna need, just that little bit. Um, make sure that it is, you know, if you still have another little blood dot, that's fine. You can stick it in there too. Don't want, like we're not filling the cap, but we're making sure that we have a good little thick dot to work with there. You see? All right. Once we've done our blood in our tube, I'm going to set the little chick down. Once you do that, you're going to push from underneath, not touching anything to close the PCR tube. A lot of people will turn it upside down really gently and close it on a table. That's fine too. So now I'm gonna look at my little chick's toe. Yeah, he's already stopped bleeding, but 
just to be on the safe side for the blood stop, you can always just dab his little toe in the blood stop just to make sure. He had already stopped bleeding though. So that's how we're gonna pull our samples. Now, if you have, once you get your little chick put away, then you're gonna wanna take your um, PCR tube that's closed up now, it has the DNA in it, and that was, his band number was 19, but I'm saying he, let's say she, her band number was 19. And so on the top of this PCR tube, we're going to write a one, because remember we wrote it down, this is gonna be sample number one. Although she's band number 19, we're only doing how many we have. So if I'm doing four samples, I'm gonna do tubes one through four. So number one, we just write it on the top. Just write a one, okay? Then we're going to get our little baggie that we have a one on. Open it up, stick the sample inside, and there we are. We have our blood sample. Now, as I continue on through our um, samples, collecting samples, they're going to all go into this little baggie so that they're separated just in case something happens in transit. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this one in here because it's done. If we were going to do more blood, then I would take my clippers and make sure that they are completely wiped off and dried. We, not only do we want them wiped, we want to make sure we got all the DNA off there really good, but we also want that alcohol to dry. So I usually do that and so that they could be drying before I even pull my other chicken and put the band on the other one, just so that I know that the alcohol is good and dry. Again, just make sure you have somewhere very clean to set them that's not like in the middle of chick feathers and everything else. Then we would just get our second PCR tube ready. Remember not to touch the inside of the cap. And we would pull our other chick, get him banded, write down what number he is versus what sample he's going to be, and then do the process all over. So it's super simple. Just like I said, make sure that you're wiping your clippers between each chick. And then label each tube, making sure not to touch it when you close it. So super simple. If you have any questions though, I'm always here to help. So just reach out.